I would like to convince more of my colleagues to take on a sober court. You know, we, we could use uh, two or three more sober courts in Harris County um, because um, we do have this uh, this reputation, um, undeservedly or deservedly, whichever way you look at it, of being the, the deadliest county in the country for alcohol-related traffic fatalities. And, uh, and DWI is right there at the t near the top of the list for the filed cases that we have in Harris County. So we need more cor courts for um, repeat offender DWIs and problem probation DWIs where somebody's have a problem. We need to get them into maybe a, a, a middle sober court for somebody that's not quite a second offender but that's heading, to, heading towards being a second offender. And um, so we want to, and, and the whole process makes the streets safer, you know, for, for everybody else. So I'd, I'd like to see more of the programs. Um, what are some yes. advantages of the of the sober court program? I'm, okay, so you're going to treat, uh, I suppose, some of the more symptoms yes. or some of the circumstances that causes an individual to use alcohol amongst others. And what are those other things? I mean, I think I understand that uh, occupational license filing fees might be helped with. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, what about the end result? I mean, are, are there helps with fees and helps with what steps are also taken to help that individual get back on their feet record-wise? Well, Sober Court is a four-phase program. Okay. And when they get into the first phase, I mean, it is quite intensive. And they don't get the use of their car in the first phase. And they have to earn that by being compliant and going through all the work that, that's required to be in Sober Court. Go to their therapy sessions, meet with their probation officers, do whatever classes they're required to take. And we help them with the fees and the, and the costs and all of that during that whole process. I mean, a lot of these things are, are now mandated by the state. You know, counties our size are required to have a, so, a sober court or a DWI repeat offender court. So um, that, that's what goes on. There's, there's more focus on the individual and their rehab. Okay, and let's look at the name of sober court, saving ourselves by education and rehabilitation. That's what sober means in our moniker. And the, these folks go through this program, and there's a whole team of folks. It's not just the judge. It's the probation office. It's the therapy session individual. We have sheriff's deputies that go to the home and visit people and check on uh, to see if there are bottles in trash cans. Mm. And, they, and they sign waivers uh, saying, yes, they can come in and, and, uh, and look around and, and meet with them. Okay? And, and so we have this support group. And it's not like we, they, they go up down there and kick the door in and look for bottles. They, if, if they find something, they report back to the team manager. The team manager reports back to me. And we don't wait for that, uh, that group session every two weeks. Sometimes we bring somebody in on an off day, and they come meet with the judge. And we figure out, what, what is the problem? What's going on? Is there something happening in your life that's making you want to drink again? And we're finding that uh, people have these little buttons that, that are pushed in their life by something or somebody that makes them uh, want to drink again, and we try to get to the, the root of it. And so we work, work through that. Can you talk about the four phases and what they are and how one maybe goes through the process? Well, they get in the first phase, and, and, and the phases are usually from, uh, they're usually about two to three month long phases. And when they, they pass into a new phase, they get a certificate and, a, and an add a boy or add a girl from the judge, and um, they, they're given new um, privileges. So it's like, you know, the child that proves to you that they are being compliant with your rules in the house, they get more privileges if they have misbehaved. So it's, it's what a good parent would do. And then they go through phase two and they get more privileges when they get into phase three. And then when, from phase three, they get into, uh, they, once they're in, uh, they go into phase four, they don't have to visit the judge anymore. They just see the person, the probation officer, so they don't have to come down so much and see the judge. And then after phase four, then they are, are released to go out to you know, into the county and they will visit their probation officer until they finish their probation and graduate from the program. So with each phase they get new privileges, they get their driving privileges after a certain point, they, uh, they, they, we give them credits for against community service if they've been doing good things. We take community service off the table. When they first get uh, sober court probation, they're given many hours of community service attached to the probation and when they do good things we give them vouchers. For community service so they don't have to do 10, 15, 16 hours of community service if they've completed uh, their rehabilitation programs and, and, and the other requirements of the program. So they're rewarded. Is the, the program, I, you, you mentioned a team, is there a, a, a medical professional in the team and is the program backed behind uh, science or or curriculum that's like it, talk to about that. It, it, the, the American Bar Association has uh, 10 
10 rules that the sober courts uh, have to comply in order to be considered a valid and, uh, and, and reliable and, and, and good sober court under their standards. And we meet those standards in Harris County. Don't ask me to name them here because I, I, need, I need my cheat sheet to do that. Right. But um, uh, it is an, our, our sober court program is nationally recognized by the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. And we have judges that, that travel around the country teaching other judges how to do this. And uh, so it, it is evidence-based. Uh, there, there's no medical person involved unless it's somebody needs to get a, med a certain kind of prescription to keep them from drinking alcohol. That's in a rare case. So there are mental health persons. We have law enforcement persons. There's a, a criminal defense lawyer is assigned to a sober court so that an individual who needs to talk to the judge about something, if there's a problem, can talk to the defense attorney in confidence without mentioning it to the judge. And there's also a prosecutor there at all of our meetings. So it's a full court press, if you will.